Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions emailed to me asking if I could show some tips and tricks for fade ins, fade outs, and cross fades in Cubase. Fades can come into two different formats, one where the fade is applied and rendered and embedded within the audio file, and the other where the fades are processed and played back in real time without the file being altered. So let's take a look at how we can set this up. To actually alter the WAV file to apply a fade, we can select the range selection tool. And as I do this, I could select a range, go to my audio menu to process, and I could choose a fade out, and I could apply the fade like so. So if we listen to that. I could also select the beginning of a file and go to the processing by right clicking, choosing process to fade in. And we could have our fade in just like that. I could select a range in the middle of the audio file, go to process and fade out. And we can see that before we've been applying straight linear fade ins, but we could actually have multiple different preset types of fade ins from logarithmic, exponential, sinusoid to do this. Oh, and you could also have different spline types. So if you want it to be more curved or if you want it to be more precise and angular, we could do this. And you could actually create your own fade in or fade out preset if that makes sense for you. Let's do something really horrible like that. We'll store it as a preset, hit OK. And now I could just simply process the middle of the file. So as we listen to this. So these have actually altered the original WAV file and, and are embedded, but we could still undo it. So if I wanted to come here and start from scratch, we can have our audio file intact. If I wanted to have audio files that had the fades applied during playback, we could take a different approach. So I could select a range. Let's say if I select the end of a file and you go to audio, you could just hit the A key and adjust fades to range. And Cubase is smart enough. If you select the end of a clip, it'll do a fade out. If you select the beginning of a clip, hit the letter A, it'll do a fade in. If you select a range in the middle of an audio clip and hit the A key, it'll fade in and fade out directly to that range. The most common way that people do fade ins and fade outs in Cubase is to just grab the upper corner handles for an audio event. And we can do this for one event or multiple event. So as I just drag this over to the left, my upper right hand corner, I could do and adjust my fade out. If I go to the upper left hand corner, we can adjust the fade in. If I wanted to change that fade in type or fade out type, just double click here in the region. And again, you could have your fade in editor and you could apply that. You could even set a default cross fade or fade in fade out. And now we could have that fade in just applied exactly to where you want to go. At times when you're working with a lot of different files, let's say if we have these files repeat right after each other, you may hear like a little click when a file starts. So if I come here, let's listen to this. So let's listen for that little click again when the new event is repeated. There's some settings in Cubase and we could actually set this up within the project under auto fade settings. So you could have these different auto fade settings for fade in fade outs as well as cross fades. And you could set this on a track by track basis. So if I wanted these fade settings to be applied to this particular uh, audio track, I could click here on this dialog box and I could say I want 
as an audio event starts, I want it to automatically fade in. I want it to automatically fade out as it ends or automatically do a crossfade. So now, as soon as I activate that, it will at this point just do the fade in, fade out and crossfade for you. And you could adjust that to make it even smoother. To do crossfades, you really just have to select two events and a crossfade looks like the letter X visually. So you hit the letter X on your computer keyboard and that would do the crossfade. If you have the events overlapping, let's say if we come here and we have these two events that overlap, I can now hit the X key and that will perform the crossfade for us. Double clicking in the crossfade will open up the crossfade editor. And just like what we had before, we could have our different types of crossfades. So if I wanted to have these crossfades, but if we wanted to have uh, different fade ins from fade outs, we could adjust and we could play the fade out, play the crossfade, play the fade in. And now as we've edited that crossfade, we can now have our crossfade set up. We could adjust the range of that crossfade so that as we do this, we can have a smooth and seamless transition between different edits. So as you can see, there's a number of great fade options, whether you want it to be embedded within the audio file, whether you want it to occur in real time processing for more flexibility so that all of your fade handling can be easily handled in Cubase to really aid in your production. If you like this video, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.